This is the avatar. The idea is to be able to change different parts, like the eyes, hair, or skin color. For this, we need to design all the elements we want to change and set up the machine to allow us to change all these elements. To see how this works, let's start with the character. Here, you can see I have a main group with all the elements inside. Then I have this frame that is just this white stroke. And under the stroke, I have this clipping shape that I use to clip all the elements of the avatar to make sure that everything stays inside. Then I have the avatar group with all the elements I need for the character. So here I have this control head that is the control I use to animate the character in the idle animation. And this second control, the control size, that is the control I use to change the size of the character. And the way that this control works is because the head control have a constraint to follow the size control. So when I change the size of the character, the control head is affected. Then I have these two bonds that I use for the deformation of the character when I move the head control. The way they work is because they have a translation constraint using as a target the head control. And because they are nested in these groups, and the groups have opposite rotation values, when I move the control, the bonds move in opposite direction. Then I have some groups with the different elements I want to switch. And for that, I use a solo objects. For example, here, the hair face, you can see I can select between three options, nothing, a beard, or mustache. Same for the hair. Here I have more elements, but works in the same way. You can see I can select any of them using the solo objects. Same thing for the eyes. And then I have this group with all the shapes I use for the body. And the last one is the background that is just an ellipse. Now let's see the animations. So here, I have the animation I need for the color of the skin, where I key the color of the different shape of the body and the eyes. Then I have the idle animation, that is a loop, where the control I use for this is the control head. Then you can see all the animation of the hair. I need one animation for each of them. And you can see that I key the hair I want in the solos. Same for the eyes and the hair face. Then I have these animations for the size where I use the size control. The bouncing animation that I use whenever something is changed. The no bouncing animation when nothing happens. And the background where I keep the feel of the shape with the different colors. Now let's see the theme machine. So here I have different things. I have these inputs and these different layers. For the inputs, I use two types. One trigger, changes, that I use to activate the bouncing animation. And the rest are number inputs that I use to switch between the different elements. For example, this is for the color of the body. This is for the eyes hair, face hair, background, and the size. Now, let's see the layers. The first layer is for the color of the body. Here you can see I have the different animation of the color with the, this transition to any state. And the condition for each of this transition is that the input number body color needs to be equal to 0, 1, 2, three and four. That means that when the input is zero, the theme machine plays the body blue animation, or when the input is four, the theme machine plays the body dark animation. The same for the background. You can see half all the animation with the transitions, and the condition is number background color is equal to zero, one, 
two, and three. Same for the hair, where I have more animations, the eyes, the hair face, the size, and the last one changes, works in different way. So here you can see I use different states. And what happened is that when the steam machine start, the animation start in either. Then to jump to bouncing, the condition is the trigger. So when this trigger is fired, the steam machine play the bouncing animation. And to go back, I use this option exit time 100%. That means when the animation is finished, when it's 100%, the steam machine go back to either. And this other bouncing animation is in case that the user clicks in different buttons quickly. This way, the steam machine don't need to wait that the animation return to either. Come jump from here because these two conditions are the same trigger. And in case that the steam machine is stopped here, I have the exit time to go back. And that's it. This is everything about the avatar. In the following video, I will show you how the icons works to select the different parts.